Alright guys, Rab here and Selium has been officially confirmed as joining phase 4 methods before the Pro League qualifier on January the 16th. So, this was rumoured, I talked about it in a couple of videos ago, about the different rumours that are going on right now in advance of that Pro League qualifier. And Selium to phase was definitely the most likely and it has been confirmed here. So I'll try and pronounce it Selium as it's meant to be pronounced. Apparently I said Selium a couple of times last video. Try and do my best not to do that. And replacing methods is really the interesting one because the question is is here. FaZe had a pretty torrid run at Vegas and they haven't really had too much success. Okay, they had a few good results last season. The jewel in the crown really being that stage one victory over Optic Gaming. Those two back-to-back -back best of five victories. Ten maps in the grand final. I'm sure some of you guys don't want to be reminded of that one, but we'll have to go through it again later in the video because that really was the crowning achievement of their World War II season. A few other good results here or there, but really didn't get back to that FaZe Clan advanced warfare pretty dominant form that they did used to have and we'll talk about whether Methods really was the right guy to leave this team for Selim because it's definitely up for debate right now keeping that four that core four on the face clan that we've had since the start of the World War II season is definitely a questionable decision given the success they've had especially at Vegas and maybe you could even bring in some World War II events as well so we'll go through that today like if you enjoy subscribe if you're new and you think I've earned it and let's crack right on here so this is what Selim actually looks like I to be honest I had no idea. There was this picture on his girlfriend's Twitter, and I, I think maybe like this picture, the face clan, they haven't really done him too much justice here. I think maybe they could have done a better Photoshop job onto this jersey. But regardless, let's go through the team. So, of course, we're looking at replays now called Crowder, Zuma and Attach, that duo who's been around for ages, and Priester. Who the F is Priester, and why is he on phase? Selium joins them. He's known as kind of an assault rifle player. The roles on this team are supposedly going to be Zuma as an SMG, joined by Crowder. I'm going to try and call him Crowder from now on. These are their results of the Las Vegas Open, by the way. So, top 16, hardly impressive. Uh, yeah, so it's these four plus Selium here. So, supposedly, Zuma and Crowder are going to be the SMGs. Attach and Selium are going to be the Maddox players, joined by Priester on that main ICR. So, really one of the defining features of this team throughout the World War II season was the fact that they could pretty much do any role. Okay, you know Zuma's going to be that crazy in-your-face SMG, but the other three guys really mix it up a lot. And at Champs last year where they came third, let's just have a look at that right here. So Face Clan ended up coming third. Priester was using in this tournament the main assault rifle. Crowder, or replays at the time, was like a flex player. So was an, an Attach and Zuma were basically running the SMGs. Now Attach and Zuma, in my mind, have always been like the SMG star players on this team. It does seem weird that Replays is the one using the sub with Attach on the Maddox. Now, you know, there's been some talk on the podcast about maybe Attach would be better in an ICR role. I definitely think that's questionable. I think that Selium and Priester would probably do a better job in that role. I think Priester is just a phenomenal player. If you're, We're going to talk in a few minutes about which player you might have removed from this team if you were going to for Selium. It definitely wouldn't have been Priester in my book. So anyway, we'll get to that. Methods, of course, went on to that G2 roster with Lacefield that I talked about yesterday. So for the Pro League qualifier, they need to come top 12 out of 28 teams of the tournament to get into the Pro League. A Pro League without FaZe Clan would be absolutely mind-blowing. So it kind of makes sense that they make this change now just to be as good as they possibly can going into that tournament. But was it the right change is the question. So firstly, let's have a look at who they've brought in. This Selium guy, he's just turned 18. You guys may not have heard of him. He's been around in online tournaments for quite a while at this point. I remember his name coming up in really Black Ops 3. I started to hear his name. I talked about this in a few videos ago. I think in that Rostermania Rumors one where he would just decimate people in 1v1 tournaments online. Or not even tournaments. He would put up challenges against the professionals just 1v1-ing them on hardpoint and I remember a stream he was playing Machilla on Stronghold just absolutely wrecked him like I think he 100 point clubbed him or something I was like who the hell is this guy people were accusing him of keyboarding all over the place similar story you know to, to a guy like Dashi but Dashi of course turned 18 a little bit earlier than Selium did Dashi competed at Infinite Warfare Champs and he had an entire World War 2 season under the guidance of veterans like Sensor guys like Ricky to guide him and mould him and you know teach him how to play respawn maybe help his attitude to some extent which can be an issue with younger players get him to the point where he goes on to optic gaming and he's probably the best player in the world right now 
Now, Cillian will also have this adjustment period. We can't expect him to just hop into FaZe Clan, put up 1.3s and just carry them to the victory. If that happens, yeah, wow. But, you know, Dashi, he's definitely got better over time. He was really impressive at Infinite Warfare Champs, particularly in Search and Destroy. World War II, of course, he was really, his name came to the fore towards the end of the game. It definitely took him some time to adapt. We can't expect Cillium to adapt straight off the fly. But let's have a look back at his placings here. Look at all the ones, man. I don't know if all the tournaments that he's competed in are on it. But if it is, this is some Crim6 level, like, victory margins. When, like, look at all these tournaments he won in a row here. Okay, these are UMG, you know, of course it's online. Definitely have to take it with a grain of salt, but if you see this guy play, and we've seen it with recently with a fair few players, when they go on to LAN, how much difference does that online play really make? For Dashi, doesn't seem to be too much. For Selium, maybe there will be a, a fair bit of difference. Who knows? It's really tough to tell. And it's definitely a risk for FaZe Clan that they decide to pick this guy up, and who knows exactly what's going to happen here. Method's a proven slayer. Definitely, you know, won a championship last year, and they go for Selian, but I definitely think it is the intelligent decision for, to go for this guy, because who knows, he could be the next Dashi, he could be absolutely godlike on LAN, you know, who knows, he could be better than Dashi, uh, what do we know? If you miss this opportunity as FaZe Clan, when's the next one going to come along? You know what I mean? Like, FaZe are the team they really need to start bringing up these young stars. Because you look on the guys on the squad, Priester was the real one of the real breakout talents of the World War II season. He comes onto this FaZe Clan team. Maybe FaZe have an opportunity to pick up another one here in Selium and mould him over time. And if you're Selium right now coming onto this squad... Who better motivator and who better leader and who better teacher do you want on a team than a guy like Replays or now known as Crowder? Similar situation to Abizi on the E United team with J Cap and uh, of course Clayster as like molders and you know people who can help him learn the game. Crowder's definitely that guy, and so Cillian must be loving what's going on right now. Won so many tournaments here. You see his counterparts in Illy. He even played a couple of tournaments with Priest. They're like, these guys know how good he is. And if you've ever watched this guy's gameplay, you know he's absolutely phenomenal. He's typically used a an assault rifle. But it does seem that on this team, he is going to be going in with the Maddox, as it seems right now. Priester, as I said, on the ICR. Attach also on the Maddox with Selium. And then Zuma and Replays on the SMG. So an interesting scenario. Let's have a look at FaZe Clan's achievements over the last couple of seasons to see what trajectory they could take with Selium. Because the role situation with, with Methods was a little bit questionable. And, okay, we'll get into that in a second. Zuma first joined this team in April 2015. And Attach joined a couple of months later here in June when they had you know this infamous line of the enable zoomer clayster attached lineup that ran all the way through the end of advanced warfare had you know one stage three or season three playoffs as it was called at the time then they went all the way through the black ops 3 season and through the infinite warfare season before finally switching out clayster for gunless when clay went onto the e united squad then they completely turned the tables at the start of World War II. Zuma and Attach have stayed on the team ever since June 2015. That both of them have been on this squad. And arguably, there's an argument that says that one of these players should have been the one to go instead of Methods off this team. We'll get to that just in a second here. But I want to go through the rest of the results. So Zuma, Attach, Replays, Priester was the squad at the start of the World War II season. They do incredibly well to come fourth at Dallas through the open bracket. Mixed bag of results apart from this fantastic victory at Stage 1 playoffs. Let's just have a look at the bracket run they had here. They lost 3-1 to TK in the first round. Beat Envy in a Game 5. Beat E United in a Game 5. 3 0 the people who beat them before. Game 5 win. Two Game 5 wins against Optic in the Grand Finals. If you guys haven't watched that series, it's a very memorable one of the World War II season. Replays and attached both with incredible 1v3s to keep them in the game. But anyway, moving on from there. So, you know, they've showed they've got incredible clutch factor as a squad. But their results are a mixed bag as I say. 5th, 6th at Anaheim. They do come top 3 at the World Championship which is a solid result but you never really felt like they were going to do any better than this in my opinion. It felt like this was kind of as good as they were going to get. And then Black Ops 4, of course, it goes 5v5. They pick up Methods. Not the best results in the Pro Downs. Not the best results in the 2Ks. And Las Vegas are top 16. It indicates for a roster change. Somewhat interesting that they decided, okay, Method is, Methods is the guy that's come in. He's the guy that's got to go out as well. Because, okay, I don't think you would get rid of Priester in a million years. I think he's a fantastic talent. He can use any weapon at all. Superbly clutch player. 
Replays, there's no chance to get rid of him at this point. The guys seem to love him. I think he's been solid in this game as well. And someone, a, a leader figure like that and a crazy good clutch player. We saw what happened when he came under pressure last year in World War II. He was the guy that really took over the game. Zuma and Attach have been kind of underwhelming for me. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but, you know, these names back in Advanced Warfare just absolutely tearing things up. Attach did had a decent Las Vegas. We'll go on to the stats in just a second, but Zuma really underperformed. So the question is, why did Zuma underperform? Let's have a look through the stats here a second. So of course, Dashi up the top. This is the adjusted kill death ratio. Not exactly sure how that's done, but just focus on the KD department right here. So we scroll down, and on the first page we find methods at a 1.17. Kind of what you'd expect, given he's the main assault rifle. And okay, this website, I'll link this all down below. This website isn't maybe the, the, the easiest to go through now, that I have to change pages every time I want to get to the next 20. Priester at a 1.12. He was also using an assault rifle, so kind of expected he's going to do well. Let's continue on here. Attach had a 1.07 as well, so Attach actually had a, a pretty damn good event. He was using Profit as well, so maybe a pinch of salt given that a Tempest is really strong, but, you know, can't take anything away from him particularly. Let's go on to this last page. I believe it is this one. Crowder, 0.88 or 0.91 KD over 16 maps, and then we find Zuma down here at a 0.82 KD overall, like... Who could have expected this going into the event? When they won stage one, which you can see right here, the MVP was Zuma at a 1.06, and that was over the entirety of stage two. At the playoffs itself, I think he was going off even more than that. So really the question is, why was Zuma struggling here? Is it the fact that they had methods on the team? Because that's kind of what I think. Is this just an off event for Zuma? Probably is. You would expect some sort of regression to the mean of Zuma going to get back to where he usually is in events. But maybe the guys on this team are thinking, wow, methods playing that super slow assault rifle role really did leave Zuma out to dry. And maybe the guys on the rest of the team don't feel like with, with methods so far behind them, they can really effectively support Zuma. And having that really wide spread of play styles from methods, probably you know, the slowest player in the game, to Zuma, arguably the quickest, or maybe, you know, Zuma, Jerd are right up there. Maybe that differential doesn't really work. So they take out methods, they bring in Selium. That extra pace could do wonders for this team. You look at this squad, I think the real issue maybe with methods is just that he plays super slow. It, it's no real surprise that World War II was a game he dominated in where it makes a lot of sense to set up on a head glitch and just wait and gun down people who come in front of you. Selium doesn't exactly have that playstyle, kind of similar to Dashi from what I've watched, and that would work wonders in Black Ops 4 for sure, when, you know, it's much faster paced because the time to kill is larger, the head glitches, they don't mean too much, the power positions don't mean as much, say, as the World War 2 situation, so I think it should be a positive change overall, I'd be interested to hear what you think, I definitely think that for now, keeping those four as is does make sense, I think this roster change overall probably is a good one, if Selium shows up to be as good as he has online this definitely should be a positive change obviously there is the question of how far can they get with this roster can they get to another championship as we saw with phase clan back in stage one are they g1 potentially down the season it's gonna come a lot down to zuma and selium i think you know what replays is going to provide he's going to put he's going to put up a 0.9 he's going to provide the leadership he's going to provide some clutch factor attach has played pretty solid priest is a fantastic player it really comes down to zuma and selium in my eyes if zuma can get back to form if he can put up a 1.0 even or even above that with the aggression that he shows and if selium could be the one to support him and drop a 1.2 and be more aggressive and have more engagements than a guy like methods then there's no real doubt that this team should improve i'm expecting them to go from top 16 maybe at the next event they'll come top 8 or something like that i do think selium will have an adjustment period with replays to get to the point where he can be a really top tier player i think it's going to take a few months at least for these guys to get within reach of challenging for a championship but i'd be interested to hear your guys thoughts on this did they make the right choice dropping methods or should they have dropped a different player off this roster but regardless i've talked for a fair bit of time like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and you think i've earned it and in the coming days we'll talk about things like 100 thieves team envious their poor performances at cw las vegas and whether they should do a change and whether maybe they missed an opportunity on a guy like selium so thank you so much for watching as always and i'll see you next time